Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. So to start off with, I have a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock that I sprayed with some water because I'm going to run it through my die cut machine with this exotic vines embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. And if you spray the cardstock you're using with water, it embosses way more detail and it also helps um, minimize or or completely alleviate any cracking especially when you're using really thick card stocks so I sprayed it with water ran it through for my die cut machine my spellbinders platinum I have the embossing folder two metal shims and the platform and that works perfect with the actual product listing there's different sandwich options depending on your machine you just got to figure out what works best for yours and this is what works for mine so at this point, everything is dry and I'm taking Simon's white pigment ink pad. I'm not pressing with it. I'm just holding it and then rubbing it against the cardstock and it's um, applying the ink to all the raised areas. I'm not concerned if I do get any like little streaky areas or anything like that. I just kind of want to bring out some of the detail with this pigment ink pad and then I'm also going to add a bunch of splatter because of course <laughs> so with the white pigment ink it does need some time to dry like I can splatter over it like I am right now that's fine but pigment inks do take longer off camera I just use my heat tool just to speed it up because why not so I've applied the pigment ink I used my Avery L white ink spray shook that up poured it out onto a palette picked it up with my fan brush and then splattered it liberally on this background to give it all the splatter and texture that I love and then set that aside. So then for my little like main sort of image, I'm using this layered birdie wafer dye. These came out, I think back in December. I think it was part of the December release from Simon. There was three different little sets of bird wafer dyes and I don't know why. I avoid using birds on my card brow. Don't ask me why. I am I get weird hangups and yet I love birds. I think they're so cute. I don't know. So I'm finally using one. So I have all the pieces. It die cuts everything just in one pass. So I die cut the pieces from Simon's Smooth White cardstock. And then I'm using different distress inks to add color with a little uh, mini blending brush. So I'm using sponge sugar festive berries and some aged mahogany and just kind of going around and adding you know the depth and the color with those colors and then I'm also going to use some black soot distress ink to add color to the little beak and to the legs I thought about trying to add it to a little little tiny tiny piece that's for the eye and I was like no no either you can run that through like the die cut machine with like a piece of black cardstock but I'm going to deal with that in a minute so I'm not going to worry about it so I just added the color to everything and then it's just a matter of adhering it this comes together super easily there's little emboss lines showing where everything kind of layers together and even if it didn't have that it comes together super simple so I adhered all the little bits and pieces so I've got my little birdie once I have all the pieces in place, I'm going to use a black glaze pen. That's what I use to give the color to the eye. And then I added a few little like dots here and there also for texture. And then I'm going to use my jelly roll white jelly roll pen to add more little like dots and highlights and things like that. No rhyme or reason, no source of light or anything. It was more just to add, you know, texture and that sort of a thing. So I ran around and did that. And then I cut down um, the background when it was dry, the embossed background. I trimmed that down to smaller than my card front. And then I trimmed down some pink cardstock from my stash, just slightly bigger. I adhered those together with craft tacky glue. And I also die cut some white cardstock and some vellum with the Privet Branch wafer die from Simon. And I'll adhere those in a second. Before I do that, I wanted to add some more of this twine because I pulled it out how many cards ago in my videos and I haven't bothered putting it back I just leave it the roll sitting on my desk this roll is like a lifetime's worth <laughs> of this twine yeah 400 yards I think I have enough to you know wrap around my house how many times anyway anyway wrap that around the background tied it in a bow the vellum 
die cut leaves are just sitting there. I didn't use any adhesive. The white die cut leaves, I put the glue on and I adhered that on top. So those will hold the vellum ones in place. And I, then that way I don't have to fiddle with the adhesive and try to hide it, anything like that. And then for my main card front sentiment, I'm actually using one of these label stickers from uh, Tim Holtz ideology pack that actually, I think this one came like in a previous card kit. I'll link to them though. I like these cause they're, you know, they look kind of like the old school label sentiments, you know? And all I did was I adhere a, one of them to some black cardstock so that that way I could trim it a little bit. And then also I'm going to pop it up with some foam tape. So now I've got kind of all my elements. So for that little birdie, I'm going to adhere with just some of Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it gives it just a little bit of dimension, but not too much bulk. And it's also going to adhere this really well on top of like, I've got the vellum and the die cut leaves and the embossed background, etc. So I popped him into place, kind of make him look like he's standing on that little um, twine that I have wrapped around. And then that sentiment, I'm going to adhere with just regular scotch foam tape. So it's a little bit thicker. So it'll just pop it up a teensy bit more. So I'll cut little strips of that. And then I'm going to pop that into place on my background. And then once I've got that in place, I have, as always, bling in my stash. Um, the hearts I sell, I don't have links for. Sorry, I've had these for a while. I have these little like heart embellishments, but then I also have some of these Trinity stamps, lipstick red satin baubles. So I pulled those out and I'm just kind of kind of sprinkle these throughout the card front as one does. <laughs> white would look really cute to you or like white pearls. I thought about that, but then I, you know, came across these pink ones in my stash and I was like, ooh. So the pink and the red just to tie in, you know, the color combo. So I sprinkled those throughout my little card front here and then I'm just going to adhere them into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then once I have all of those adhered, that will complete the card front. And then off camera, I put um, Big Mama foam tape on the back of this card front as well, which you'll see at the end before I adhere it to my card base. But of course, I have to do the inside of the card as well. So I got all my bling adhered, set that aside to dry. For the inside of my card, I just trimmed down another piece of that Desert Storm cardstock. And then I'm going to use a sentiment from the All About You stamp set. I just I love these like big chunky sentiments and I love the font. Just love. So I got that straight lined up inside my Misty and I'm going to stamp that thank you sentiment with uh, Verse Fine Claire Nocturne Ink because as always, even though this is part of my Valentine series, the front of this card is kind of Valentine's-y like the color combo and everything and then, you know, sending love. But I prefer cards that I can use for anything, especially thank you cards. So stamp the thank you sentiment. And then I pulled a little heart from that same stamp set that I'm going to stamp with spun sugar distress oxide ink. It's very, very pale in real life. It shows up better on the videos. Of course, it just doesn't, but I stamped this multiple times and I'm even going to heat set it with my heat tool and then stamp it yet again, because oxides do show up on craft card stock, but a color this pale, like spun sugar, it needs to be layered multiple times. If you really wanted it to stand out, and of course, afterthought as always, you could stamp it in white pigment ink first, heat set it, then stamp a couple times with the sponge sugar on top of it. That would probably make it stand out more. And what I should have done. I think of these things always after the fact. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I used craft tacky glue in the back of this panel. I adhered this to my card base. I had this like deep reddish color for my stash. I don't even know where I don't have a link for this one either but another good option would be like Simon's schoolhouse red cardstock such a deep red one of my faves anyway I adhered the inside peeled off the backing of foam tape to pop this onto the card front and then I'm going to pair this card with one of Simon's cotton candy metallic envelopes and that's going to finish off this card so I've got like texture and splatter and bling and this adorable little bird and this fun sentiment and of course something on the inside so as always I will have a link below the video to my blog post in the blog post I'll link to the color throwdown challenge if you guys want to check it out because anyone can play along with it 
I will have, of course, my supply list, links to all the supplies used. You can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.